pressure and cost containment. It's a, another challenge that is very important for all CPG customers. So basically, I want to bring and increase the profitability while reducing the cost. We have a lot of regulation change and you need to perceive all the changes on your products and uh, how to react to the uh, competition. And basically another challenge will be how to have an agile value chain, how I can connect the producer to the manufacturer to the retailer. This is our concern and challenge of each CPG customer. In addition to that, we are seeing a new challenge coming in the market. So we, first of all, the new consumer, Today, the new consumer is changing his habit. He can buy online, he can buy on store. So more and more, the consumer is demanding for personalized product, is demanding for uh, different experience of the product and so on. If you think about two thirds of the consumer class are, will be based on 600 mega cities. So this is an evolution. This is a new challenge that each CPG company need to think about it and how to address and how to connect with the new consumer. In addition to that, we have other challenge like the shift to health and wellness. More and more uh, CPG customers are, uh, chal uh, are challenged by the consumer to have healthy and wellness product. Now the consumer want to check the ingredient list, want to check all the benefit of the product before even to buy it. So more and more this is becoming a challenge and uh, for CPG customer and it's more and more there is the need to be transparent uh, with uh, the customer, they need to take care about the environment, so reduce the foot, uh, CO2 footprint in the market, uh, in the environment, and so on. So more and more, we see this kind of challenge coming uh, and uh, part of um, the, each CPG customer. In addition to this challenge, we are seeing disruption. More and more CPG customers are facing the small brand competition and also the new connected commerce battlefield. So more and more we are seeing packaging connected online and the digital technology. So all these are part of daily challenge of CPG customer and they have to take the opportunity now to digitalize all their system, informatic system in order to face and cope this challenge. So let me introduce to you our uh, portfolio solution in, uh, in uh, Dassault system. So basically you have to bear in mind that time to market is extremely critical for brand manufacturer. So let's work through the innovation process. So on the dark blue bar, you can see the ideal innovation process of the CPG market. It starts by ideation, where we capture the insight and new ideas. So this idea will be shortlisted to the best idea that we want to develop and we want to feel be successful and we want to produce it for the final launch. Then it will be launched in the first market. Please keep on mind that the first company who bring new product to market will likely get the biggest market share. So it's important to be the first in introducing new product to market. Once the brand manufacturer has achieved the first market success, it will replicate this product launch in another local market or territory. This is, I'm doing adaptation and I'm, I'm doing variation to my product. So you can see at the top of the illustration, you can see that the, uh, that the product development process requires different departments and external supplier to collaborate to, to deliver the final product. So in Dassault system, we help CPG and retail manufacturer by providing the 3D experience platform as a backbone to enable the end-to-end -end digital continuity. So, the 3D experience enable management of the packaging development, what we call the perfect package solution. The product formulation, it's perfect product solution. And the laboratory activities, which are around the solution called the perfect lab. Then the platform manage manufacturing excellence with perfect production and master the supply chain, both inbound and, and outbound. This is based on the perfect value chain. To finally defining the winning merchandising strategy at shelf to achieve the market success and thanks to the perfect shelf solution. So brand manufacturer will reuse the same industry solution experience to replicate success in another market. 
So this is today our portfolio and today we will focus on the perfect package industry solution experience. So the perfect package industry solution experience, well, it's based on the 3D experience platform. The perfect package will combine creativity and innovation to create breakthrough design as a precise interpretation of the client vision incorporating rapid prototyping in an unified industrial design workflow solution for ideation, design, modeling, that is the artwork part, the testing to a complete visualization experience while accelerating the collaboration between the teams. Perfect package is composed by eight industries process, the perfect initiative to manage project, perfect package asset to centralize all the documentation of a company, package, uh, perfect package design to make the first sketch, the perfect package design to finalize the technical design and structural design so we can do shapes and carton, and you will have the artwork and labeling perf uh, solution to manage all the graphic part related to the 2D and the perfect test to make virtual test by simulating physical low. And, uh, and you will have the perfect specification to manage all product structure and specification. And finally, the perfect visualization for a high realistic view of the product before even it exists in the market. And you can see the value of the solution coming from our customer. Cut design time by 50%, reduce packaging material and design by 30 to 50, and you develop your own IP, which is important for each company, for each CPG company to have the IP internalized and uh, a single version of tools for all the, their uh, data. Today, we will focus on the perfect test, how perfect test can help you uh, in accelerating product innovation and how it helps you to reduce packaging, uh, testing, and so on. So let's zoom a little bit on the solution. And you can see here in this uh, presentation, the, in the left hand, you can see the physical test, and in the right hand, you can see the virtual test. So today we are able to create virtually the same simulation uh, in order to gain time and accelerate time to market. All the checks can be done virtually before even moving to a physical test. So the perfect package is about business transformation. It's about managing, giving simulation for experts. So the system, the solution allow you to have complex simulation and expert working on it and the solution enable to give to non-expert the uh, possibility to test also their simulation and to test their drawing, their design without being an expert of a simulation. So the solution is divided into expert and into non-expert. And you can generate thousands of predicted design and you can select the best design, the best simulation, the best design will fit your need to go to market for the product launch. Here you can find uh, different types of simulation that we support today in the CPG market. So we, when it comes to production, we are able to provide blue molding, plastic injection, capping, a filling test. And you can see from a product uh, uh, performance and uses, you can have a drop test, you can have a labeling test, squeeze test. So these is our types of simulation that today we are covering and we are supporting with our solution and we help our customer to accelerate time to market and optimize their packaging. Here you can see an example of a type of, um, of a simulation using the perfect package solution. So the perfect package does not limit to package design, it provides a holistic experience that encompasses the whole life cycle of a packaging. So it starts with the development of the primary and secondary package, as many of the company do, which form the consumer unit and the trade unit. Here, the shape and the graphic innovation are key to keep the attractive shopper and stand out of the competition on the shelf and store. Integrity tests allow to ensure that the package are strong enough to endure the different steps of transportation, handling, and warehousing, so that they will remain appealing when they arrive on the shelf. Consumer unit are grouped into trade unit, as you can see in the second step. Optimization routine will help you to store as many products as possible in the box, thanks to uh, bringing, putting in place some knowledge in the optimization. 
handling unit design routine will automate the optimized stacking of unit on a pallet. And the trade unit and handling unit are subject to strong physical constraint and simulation is going to optimize their design accordingly. So it is then important to check the stability of the pallet in a static and in dynamic during the transportation, like braking, pumps, and curve. So in the normal way, all of this requires physical prototype, physical test, and can hardly be paralyzed. Perfect Tekes is changing the game by executing them virtually to save time and money. So let's deep dive more on uh, more detail, and I will give now the floor to Swapam to explain you more in detail what we can do with the software and with the Perfect Package solution. Hi, everybody, and thanks for late. Yeah, my name is Swapan, and I'm a partner with Vyas. I worked extensively with Dassault on the simulation side, and uh, and specifically on the uh, with the consumer goods industry. So I'm going to take a deeper dive into the simulation of the packaging. So today I'll just kind of go over an overview of the kind of simulations we can do, and in the subsequent series of seminars, we'll take a much deeper dive into each of the each of the subcategories. So. I would like to start by first addressing what is unique about simulation to the consumer goods industry. Simulation or finite element analysis in the automobile and the aerospace, I would regard it as pretty mature. It is kind of, it is kind of accepted as a business practice uh, much more widely. As far as the consumer goods goes, it has been kind of a process of slow adoption, but at this point, I believe it is kind of ready for, um, you know, for a much broader takeoff. The first thing is that with the automobile and the aerospace, the kind of materials you model, like steel, aluminum, they are from a modeling perspective, they are less complicated than the kind of materials that you see in the consumer goods. It is far easier to model steel, aluminum, where you just have elasticity, you have plasticity, then maybe you model something like a paper towel, which is much more, it is much more complicated. And the simulation on the right you see, it's an embossing simulation on a paper towel. And I can tell you it's really complicated to kind of get what we have achieved over there because the deformation is extreme. You need to manage the deformation. You need to manage the contact. You need to have the material properties right. And all of these are much more unique to the consumer goods industry. So any solver, I mean, so like, the, so like what we have today, we can handle a range of complexity of materials. We can handle elasticity. We can handle hyperelasticity, viscoelasticity, plasticity, finite strain plastic elasticity, um, all of it inside the Abacus solver, which is which is plugged in the 3D experience platform. And we also have a framework to handle uh, any of the materials from first principles. So if you have to write your own material model from scratch, we have the we have the ability to handle that. The key uh, another key aspect about consumer goods is that any solver needs the ability to handle high deformation. And this really pushes many of the traditional finite element techniques to the edge. So over the years, we have built uh, many complex uh, techniques within the solver, like adaptive meshing, uh, the I-11 technique, uh, the I-11 Lagrangian technique, the SPH. And I'll talk about it a few as we go along in this seminar in the subsequent series. Uh, the 3D experience, the Abacus solver in 3D experience is kind of famous for handling really complex contact. And you know, I would probably say it's the best code on the planet. I can make the claim about it as far as handling complex nonlinear contact goes. Uh, uh, often the physics is complicated, and you need to go back to the drawing board. You, it may not be the material type you support. You might have a different element type. It might be a multi-physics simulation, and so the solver needs to have a framework to be able to couple uh, what is provided inside of 3D experience and any external solver. And how do you do the coupling? Maybe it's a fluid structure analysis. Maybe it involves much more complex, uh, say it's an oxidation analysis, and then that requires a different, uh, it requires a different differential equation than, than what's available. So do we have the framework to handle that? So it provides a framework to handle that. So if you have to bring in your solver and plug that and couple that together with what's kind of available within uh, the 3D experience, that's possible. Lastly, the automation challenges are kind of unique. So once you have a mature simulation methodology, 
and if you want to kind of deploy it to your colleagues or maybe make it kind of a broader practice within the organization across the enterprise for that it requires a unique level of robustness the simulation methodology should be robust and to have a robust methodology with all the about challenges i listed that's a challenge in itself so i mean that's kind of the, the it's kind of the things that i've listed you know and you need a really good software solver to be able to address that and i would like to go over some of the things that we can address today so this is a blow molding simulation and as you can see it uh, for blow molding we can handle both the extrusion blow molding as well as the stretch blow molding there are a number of uh, multiple models which are provided inside of abacus and you can introduce temperature dependency you can introduce time dependency you can and you can have a finite strain i mean you can have an inelastic portion of the strain you can have an isotropic hyperelasticity so the key is the material model you need the ability to handle uh, extreme deformation and complex conditions and so i mean and this has been deployed by a number of organizations the blue molding so you can get the thickness profile out of this simulation and you can use that thickness profile in subsequent simulations for your squeeze for your top load and you can optimize on that thickness profile from the simulation that you get to uh, to essentially eliminate some of the material cost or reduce the material cost or maybe just ensure that it's not going to fail the second one is the plastic injection so uh, basically have some understanding of how the mold impacts the you know how the how the manufacturing impacts the mold and vice versa to avoid any costly mold rework and you know just ahead of time i mean kind of understand those issues you can do that with the plastic injection molding so i'm not going to go into kind of a detailed dive of how we accomplish this today in this seminar in the second seminar series uh, i will take a deeper dive into the blue molding part of it the build the blue molding and the rigid uh, simulations the next is the squeeze simulation so i think this is kind of fairly simple and straightforward i would say compared to the two i just presented you know if you just want to have a, if you want to have an understanding of whether your beer, how much is the force that the bottle can take that your new product can take the new package can take and whether it is compliant enough and once you squeeze it is it likely to spring back to its original shape or is it going or it will be difficult for it to spring back to its original shape and those kind of things you can look into it you can look at the uh, you know you can look at what would be an ideal thickness profile essential to accomplish it the thickness profile that you get from blow molding as well as the uh, and and accordingly kind of modify the simulation the next is the filling of the flexible package and the drop test so drop test is kind of fairly common across number of industries not just consumer products it's across consumer electronics etc so here we have we we do a drop test on a filled package and you know so uh, you can you can simulate liquid in a number of ways one is uh, you can uh, at at a number of level of abstractions i should say if you just want to incorporate the fluid as a volume constraint you can do that simply using what we call as hydrostatic elements uh, you if you just want just the pressure stress and the sloshing to be modeled we can do that so that doesn't it doesn't it, it doesn't cost the computation too much or if you want a much more realistic like what we have today is i mean what we're seeing is the sph method is a spherical particle hydrodynamics method which can handle much more complex uh, you know it, it can it can handle much more complex uh, uh, physics and deformation and you can go with the eilevin lagrangian framework or if necessary we can couple it with a fluid solver to do it so this is again i mean you can uh, evaluate whether the product that you develop is going to be compliant or do you need to go and make a change ahead of time i mean you can you, you can basically virtually test out concepts yeah the second one is the conveyor system uh, typically there is a perception that the finite element is very useful at the design stage for the designer with the the simulation part of it you i mean you hand this tool to the like the designer and the analyst they can come up with a better design but in this scenario what we had was a this is a real life scenario where it was applied to the assembly line it is applied to the assembly line so you know you have a real video at the bottom and the and an nfa simulation on the top 
So basically, if a decision needs to be taken uh, at the assembly line about at what velocity it needs to go, whether whether we should we use the assembly line A versus B, those kind of things it can be empowering also to uh, at the manufacturing level over it. So uh, yeah, so I mean uh, you can see the simulation here. You know, so basically you can simulate the assembly line. Uh, you can simulate the contact between the package products as well as with the assembly line and you can try to understand if there is going to be any blockage what will be the optimal velocity to maximize your throughput without uh, without avoiding blockage the next is a capping uh, simulation if you want to predict the torque uh, required to open your can whether uh, without overstressing what would be the torque required to do it if you want to predict the ceiling performance you can look at the contact pressures and there is usually an empirical relation that that organizations have that this much contact pressure can this is required for ceiling and so forth and this kind of analysis i would say is fairly mature and it's fairly kind of simple to do today within the 3d experience platform the next is the top load scenario so i mean this is also kind of fairly unique you stack up different packages on top of each other. You just want to make sure that uh, it can handle an X amount of force without breakage, without hitting into breakage or into compliance. Uh, the next I have as an example is a is a wrapping and a casing simulation. And I would say that this is uh, this requires a number of things in the solver to get it right. So this has complex contact, and you know you are actually simulating how the shrinkage i mean uh, how the wrapping happens on uh, over here and you can you can look in the contact pressures whether it is going to be uh, overfit or whether i mean whether uh, that what kind of contact pressures we are getting and whether the casing is going to be sufficient to lift the weight of the package or do we need to increase the thickness and so forth so those are the answers you can get virtually without having to do a physical test. I mean, I, I shouldn't say you don't have to do a physical test, but you can evaluate concepts much more faster here. So instead of in, instead of doing an extensive testing, you have an idea ahead of time. And instead of doing 10 tests, you can kind of reduce the extent of physical testing you do and also probably get a better answer. The next is the transport. This the one that Valid talked about. You know, once you package your material in boxes, if you actually want to uh, see how uh, how it would uh, how it would behave under a dynamic set of conditions one is you could do it at you know like this is like this is basically the package at the unit level it's stacked up together and under acceleration and the braking or or you could come up with your i mean or you could actually supply a uh, real world a scenario uh, and and see what would be the impact of it under the various kind of dynamic situations can do a vibration analysis here. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, all right, so we talked about the product part of it. So this is just not restricted to the product part. You can actually simulate processes. And, you know, I mean, this is a classic example over here. And, uh, you know, this again has been done by one of our customers, Tetra Pak, with, with some success, I would say and uh, you can see the whole process over here on the right you have a reel of packaging material that material is really thin typically the uh, this has high velocity you have thin materials you have high velocity and you need some kind of a mechanism to model failure uh, all of which you can see in the right i mean uh, on the simulation on the right and the article simulation on the uh, on the left you could see that yeah you we also have the boundary conditions to be able to handle say like you have uh, you have a manufacturing process and if you have to simulate it to two minutes and that's that's the time it starts achieving a steady state or even if you simulate for two you know a few seconds or ten seconds given the given that the velocity is very high the computational cost can really stack up so but it's steady state so do you actually need to simulate the whole length of the material no you need specific boundary conditions for that. So the solver has those things inbuilt inside of it that you can handle those much more effectively. 
another interesting example which has been successfully applied uh, you know by coke and this has been very successful you know so basically if you want to predict the shelf life so any any sort of doing is going to have some kind of fizz associated with it over time that fizz kind of dissipates and you know because of leakage of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere and leakage of oxygen inside the bottle so how do you do that so that's you can do a mass diffusion analysis uh, you could you, or you could uh, Equate the mass diffusion equations to a heat transfer analysis since the differential equations are the same and uh, You can predict the shelf life and this has been extensively used inside of coke to predict shelf life uh, To understand ahead of time. What is going to be the predicted shelf life before it goes to manufacturing before it goes to uh, is shipped to the customers Another example of flexible packaging here. So the goals really is that you need to ensure that the package stays sealed during shipping and handling the package opens easily and smoothly and there is no unexpected failures and you know so there are a number of variables you can optimize it for uh, what would be the best material what what would be an ideal sealing force bonding method i mean and so what would be the force that would be required for to peel off without causing breakage and is that an ideal force for a human hand those are the things of answers you could uh, do it virtually yeah. so this is just kind of a small subset of things you can do you know you can really dig down uh, just as I mean at the beginning of the, sem at the seminar that Valid gave a huge list so if you have more interest you could ask us questions and we'll get back to you you know that how if you have specific questions that how do you want to simulate this I, I have this process is it possible to simulate this and what would it take to get it done you know we could uh, uh, we could kind of go into that details about it so this was on a specific simulation per se the platform also provides a mechanism to automate say like if say if you have a successful top load in your organization and you want to run hundreds of those simulation so you need an automation framework okay you run those hundreds of simulation you need a way to be able to decide which is the best and which is not the best so you need some kind of decision support you need some kind and you don't need to uh, run all of all hundred of those just at a randomly you need to decide what would be the best ones to run so you need some kind of an optimization framework so those things are the, the automation and optimization is kind of built in in the platform so you have you, you have your CAD uh, you, you can make your design inside of your CAD you can do your simulation along with your optimization or uh, you know uh, all inside the same platform so you can author workflows so I wouldn't go into details here in this seminar about it but you can really kind of make complex workflows not just with solvers which are available inside of 3d experience but with any other commercial solver there is a huge component library and uh, many times I mean there is a significant chance that you can just use those things out of the box without having to get into uh, into the programming parts of it you know, into detail programming. So you can also do a full-blown reliability analysis. Just to elaborate, you know, further on it, you do your design of experiment. That's what I called DOE here, and you you probably have a database of 100 or 200 runs. Once you have that, that might be enough to create a response surface or approximation, or you can call it an empirical representation of a simulation. The idea really is that a simulation in itself is expensive. It could be expensive, it could be a one hour simulation, it could be a few hours simulation, it can take 16 CPUs, it can take four CPUs, four cores. You don't know that, but it takes time. And if you want to do a full blown reliability study, uh, a Monte Carlo, you know, basically, you know, just to understand that these are the kind of variations I'm going to have in my manufacturing, these are the variations I'm going to have in my material. And I want to understand what is the reliability of my package, not just a sim one simulation. You can do that. The first step would be create an approximation or a response surface uh, for the model once you have successfully done that you can probably run as many you know as many runs as you like because then you really don't need to run the solver the full solver again you can probably run a million of those and get a full-blown reliability analysis I'll take a deeper dive on this in the subsequent series but I just want to give a flavor that uh, you can integrate simulation with optimization with reliability studies over here to create a much more powerful offering so the idea here is that you have your design of experiments so this is probably the feasible space in which you need to find a solution so you know 
usually the optimal solutions end up being near the constraint boundaries these are the unfeasible uh, these, these are the unfeasible spaces so you can go with a solution optimal solution which is near the constraint boundary but in real life that's going to lead to much more failure because there are always going to be some variations in inputs and those variations in inputs would basically mean that you start violating the constraint much more often than you would than you would otherwise like so you can optimize for a specific reliability number so you can set the optimization that you know my i, I want it to be reliable that it should fail only five parts per million you can set those numbers and then the optimal solution would not be here it would be somewhere here so essentially you can you know uh, you can basically evaluate multiple scenarios uh, you can not just simulate one scenario but evaluate multiple scenarios and go with the best solution you know we have the current solution you have you know uh, you have your route one route two route three you can make a choice that which ones you want to go whether the filled bottle top load which ones works out the best the route one works out the best for that uh, for the side load which one works out the best and you can make a choice you can make a much more informed choice all right so just again to just again to emphasize the point that this is kind of all integrated within the platform it was kind of possible to do this just about five years back all of it you know i mean even today you have many kind of each one of this is kind of an independent product outside in the world so the big thing about the 3d experience platform is that it kind of brings everything together on a single database so right from your idea to you can check up all the past initiatives and you can recreate the model inside inside of katia you can do the cad and the simulation part which you talked about and authoring of optimization tools and eventually you know the artwork and how it would look on the uh, inside the shop and those decision making it can be done all within the platform so really that's all i had you know and a couple of customer testimonies that you know you can really save on the material cost to just give you an example i mean for the consumer products even if you save 10 percent of the material when you're making a billion of those that really can stack up a lot and well it can stack up a lot not just in the material cost but in the transportation cost and overall competitive advantage uh, the another one of transport of stacking you know we had from Sullivan and so I just put up a couple of testimonials and I think this is what we had for the first seminar and I'll open the floor for any questions and answers uh, you may have Any questions? I just want to make sure that people are able to ask questions or is it just I'm not able to hear it right now. Um, Okay. All right. We have some questions here. Uh, okay. So there are going to be four webinars in the uh, series. Uh, so this is the first one. So including this, there'll be four of them. So you should see email invites out for the subsequent webinar series. And we would kind of take up one topic at a time. So for the next seminar, the planned idea is that we go into the rigid packaging and blow molding take a deeper dive into that and after that we go into the flexible packaging so into that so of that uh, other question we have do you have any applications for the structural stuff uh, yes definitely we have a number of applications for the structural stuff if you have a specific product in mind which you need to simulate we would be more than happy to answer we can do steel reinforcements we can do hooks we can definitely do all of that i would say modeling steel aluminum anything steel aluminum the solver that we have today has been able to do that since two decades by now so 
I mean, consumer products was a harder thing to uh, kind of handle uh, in a relative sense. So uh, hopefully that's, uh, uh, that hopefully helps. Uh, any other questions? Uh, okay, I mean, just shoot us an email and you know, I mean, probably with, and or maybe we can have a, a follow up one on one if you have questions on it on the structural side and we can take it from that point you know so on your specific application you, you can basically demonstrate that this is uh, this is what we intend to model this is the process today and it would would uh, would incorporating simulation be of any help in the process uh, and how much and what we can expect out of it so uh, one more thing I would like to say is that we also have a cloud trial if you would if you would like to try this out we could probably arrange for that you know and uh, you could you know well we can work those things out but just wanted to let people know for awareness all right okay do you have to be an expert analyst to do analysis for packaging uh, I would say uh, I would say if you are a designer today and if you take up a couple of weeks of training so it depends on the kind of analysis you do uh, for a number of analysis like top load squeeze and drop I'm actually very comfortable that you know I mean we have advanced to a sufficient point that somebody who has a basic engineering background should be able to handle it it does not need to be necessarily an expert in the finite element technique you know and uh, will you can there is kind of a much more I mean for more complex analysis you need to have a much more in-depth knowledge of the methodology but uh, there is kind of a fair number of things which we can achieve by just being I mean by if, if you just even kind of if, if this is the first time you're handling simulation you know and we are here to help if it requires more complexity we can definitely help consult with it and you know so it could be kind of a joint effort it could be that you know you take the I mean it, we, we can work those things out uh, yes there are designer level analysis on the platform so if you have if you if you are a CAD designer you're using either Katia or uh, SolidWorks you can use the power of the simulations you can you know if you just want to have a you, you want to have an understanding what would happen if you apply x amount of load onto your product or uh, and if you constrain it how would it how would it look like before you pass it on to further experts or you know or even just to the test group to so just have some kind of you would just do some kind of a due diligence all right any other questions Yeah, so uh, yeah, if there were no questions, I would probably uh, I would say thanks everybody. Okay, it looks like we have one more. Okay, okay, I'm interested in the courses of simulation. Perfect. Uh, I will have somebody be in touch with you. We offer an extensive list, uh, list of courses, and if you already have experience with Abacus CAE, I think you are in very good. Uh, you are in very good kind of position point this point yes some of the tools are, uh, are provided to software to uh, and we, we can get back to you on the question uh, this this refers to David's question about geoengineer or any of the simulation tools provided to that uh, SolidWorks yes actually uh, SolidWorks and the salt well uh, they are the same company the salt owns them so uh, the internally the solvers now are managed by simulia so you know so and it's just a question of how much of the capability is directly available inside of solidworks and we can get back in touch with you on it all right i will hold on for a couple of minutes if there are more questions uh, if not i mean thanks everybody again and we'll send out invites for the subsequent 
seminar series where we will take a deeper dive into it uh, and we'll take it from that point. Thanks everyone for attending. So I'm going to hang up and feel free to shoot us an email if you have more questions. Uh, we'll be more than happy to have a one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you.